Ditch, my pal. Good evening. Um, nice well get though. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Well, we're back for a Bronx for one last time. I say one last time, it'll probably be back at some point. But for the time being, this is the final conclusion. Now, today, I'm going to walk with you all in a little place that started this all. This whole, I say this all, let's talk about the village, shall we? This community, where this community started. Now I'm currently walking, which some of you might recognise, one of the great luxuries here of living in Tumble, right on the cycle track. But at one time, it was something more than a cycle track. It was a it was the Manithmau railway line, which took us from, um, I think it, it's a, I'm going to say and take a guess, but report, Llanelli, um, is to come right through to Croissants, maybe further, maybe someone else knows the, the true fact. I've read a lot about this stuff over the years, however, I don't always have the exact facts as many point out, which is good. This is about us collaborating um, and not littering. <laughs> so yeah, Shamai Mandy, Shamai Stephen, Lynette, thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, if I walk you a little further, hopefully we'll come round to where I need to be. Now I've avoided talking about the mining industry for the pure fact that when we grew up, that's all we knew was a past that we didn't know. And I wanted to look at a, a generation that was born into that idea and didn't necessarily know what it was. We've heard songs about it, we've heard stories, we've seen TV programmes, we hear old stories. Um, but we've never understood it. It had gone long before we were born, as wonderful as it is, and as amazing as this sort of heritage is, I'm pretty proud of it. Tumbo was known for its black diamonds. Now, its black diamond here was anthracite. Um, how many of you know about coal? How many of you care about coal? Well, this village was founded upon it. It started only because of it, unless you think about farming industry. The farming industry was quite strong long before the mining industry, and that's where our main sort of uh, um, industry was before that. But yeah, there's a massive story, and Don Carby, you lent me um, a good book recently on the history of Tumbo, which fills in the little details. Unfortunately, I have a retention, um, memory retention of a, what can we say, a goldfish, possibly. Um, but I do my best, and hopefully you can fill in the, the gaps as well. Good evening, Karen, Liz, um, who else is with me? Rianne, Melanie, Jem. Thanks for joining me. Do me a favour. Hit the share button. Let's get this out there, shall we? As I said, this is the last uh, Bronx that I'm going to be doing for a while and should conclude um, my journey from, from the street that we grew up and the places where it came from. So I'm now walking down towards the old shaft. Um, as soon as I get there, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so on the line that I was just talking about, you can see pretty much mid tumble from there. Um, now that line changed everything. You travel the, the 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 railway that that changed the way our society or community worked. Now, can you imagine? Long before that, it was Keflin cart, a horse and a cart had to take you, or Gambo, somebody told me the other day that uh, they'd hitch on to the horse and it was like a, 
That, I just imagine a go-kart when somebody says that. Or trailer, possibly. A little wooden trailer. Anyway, that's how people used to travel. God, it used to take them the best part of a day to get to Llanelli or the town, especially on foot. But then comes along the, the railway. Wow, can you imagine how that would have changed everything? Now, things are much different today with the with cars and everything. We all travel by cars and transport. Public transport is almost disappearing in front of us, the way things are going, which is an absolute tragedy. And I could go into other stories uh, that are quite current right now with the sc school buses. Um, I won't. I think people around you are quite aware of it. We can't rely on cars alone, okay? Not everybody drives. Um, and not everybody wants to share a lift with someone else. Public transport has to exist, full stop. But that was born here with the Manith Maur um, Railway. Later on came the buses, and then Gwyn Williams played a part in that. Uh, now, I'm actually leaving the track, and I'm coming down to where the old shaft was. Now, it is said that here, somewhere, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see something. Probably not, everything's grown over. If I turn this around... Uh, nope, you can't see anything. Okay, I'm going to go around you. Um, so I'm coming up to the back of the, the old Tumble Hotel. And I'm coming up to a little car park that still exists here. We used to have a fair ground here. Uh, anybody out there? Anybody sending messages? Let me just turn this around. Good evening, Mark. Sunday evenings won't be the same without you, mate. Ah, thank you very much, Mark. Um, the whole idea was that we made something for a Sunday night. For those of you who, like me, need something to do on a Sunday. Now, let's turn this back around. See those gates? Those gates there are the pearly gates to the old mining industry in Tumble. What's left of it? And that's nothing, unfortunately. We can't get in there. We can't... We can't study with it. Well, I say that. If I could just prise that open, which I can't. But behind there, in behind there somewhere, there's a shaft that they've capped off. Now this is a drift, apparently, that carries you either to croissants, and some have told me that it might actually take us to Llanon. Now, if this is the case, that drift at one time would have taken us to Llanon during the Rebecca riots, hence the secret passageway. Um, Elizabeth Bennett, hi, how nice to see you back. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Unfortunately, I wish I had more time to do this on a regular basis. Unfortunately, that, that can't happen. Um, lots of other things in the pipeline. Lots of other things keeping me busy. And you'll learn a little more about that soon. Um, good evening, Wayne. Thanks for joining me. What else is going on? So what's everybody been up to? It's been about four weeks since I was on this thing. Sorry. Uh, it wasn't meant to be that long. It's just I took a break. And then things got a little bit sort of uh, hectic with other stuff. Uh, as it does. That's life. Hit the share button. How many of you know about the Instagram stuff I'm doing right now? It's kind of all about the generation that we're from. It all attaches to this. The Instagram uh, Exhibit X is all part of this project. So this uh, Bronx is part of Zenil, and uh, my new project. And it'll be on show. Even this and some other parts of our live streams will be uh, in the Senneth starting from last week I think last Thursday so you can go down to the Senneth and you can see some of the photographs that I've taken that you haven't seen anywhere else and some of the other work that I've been producing well exhibit X is on Instagram right now for the next week again um, you can follow me there and read a lot of stories so it's not just a photograph there's a photograph and there's, there's tons of other stuff behind these videos, stories, questions, get involved. It's a, in, an interactive project that I'd like everybody to sort of contribute. So come with me and be part of it all. You were there, we were there. Let's talk about it. Anyway, 
let's turn back to this. I've just seen a squirrel the size of a a dog. I can almost see it in the background there. Good evening, Michael. Bugs Ditch. It's good to see you on you, my friend. Anyway, now there, that little gate still holds behind it somewhere there a capped off shaft to the old mine. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that must be like? Now, a friend of mine, um, a couple of friends of mine actually, have told me recently that they remember, Adrian remembers, going down to the, to the shaft there and he'd walk in, pick a phone up and phone home. Free. Back then you had to pay 10 pence to get in a phone box, okay? 10 pence. I'm sure I remember fives at one point. Anyway. 10 pence in a phone box. And that would probably give you what? 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe. Um, here, here, free phone calls. To the world if you wanted it. Because nobody was guarding it. But I don't remember ever going down there. Maybe, apparently I did. But I, I, I never remember it. Now my father used to go there. Um, he used to close um, the shaft or put the lock the gates and close everything down and make sure everything was fine at one point with his friends. Now, Wed, Wed Dreis, one of the characters of the, the old mining village here, apparently, look at this in the background, I can't, let's just imagine what it must have looked like. In the back there, you can just imagine the, the entrance to the mining, um, or to the mine, and apparently there was an explosion and the, the, the front of the shaft um, collapsed. Well, Wed and his friend were outside when this happened. But what Wed decided to do, I think, I think it was Wed or his brother, maybe Carnan, um, who'd apparently got them all out before it had actually collapsed. Put his well in tins, his wellies, hanging out of the rubble and left to go to the pub. A pub which is no longer here by the looks of it. Um, who else have we got here? Yeah, my James, thanks for joining us. Yeah, they left their wellies hanging out of that rubble and left to go to the pub. Well, they thought nothing of it. Well, afterwards, apparently, the emergency services were working very hard to pull Wedros out of that rubble. Turned out it was just a pair of wellies in the end. But you can imagine the uproar, can you? That's the kind of characters that lived and worked and breathed at this kind of industry. Now if I turn this around... Now right there stood... Well, right there I would say, stood the Tumble Hotel. Um, no longer there. You have new houses on it instead. I remember a building, a brick building in the background there when we were kids. I have said this before. Good evening, Phil. Now, the mining industry was a big thing, as I've said. Kids, can you imagine this? Um, kids used to sit a labour exam, right? 13. If they passed the 13, that labour exam, they were in that mine. Some of them never came out. Some of them, it was, it was an awful hard... Um, job to do and for a child with very little strength you know poverty uh, in this sort of community they didn't have much money back then uh, these kids would work for you know small money little food and there were regular accidents um, recorded in that place so you know it was an awful thing for families to have to go through um, just turn that around so what we have now we don't have the tumble hotel which was built in somewhere, somewhere between uh, 18, I think it was in 1860s the Tumble Hotel was built. Also known as the Tumble Inn. Now the Tumble Inn, before that, was known as the Tumble Down Dick. And some think that that's where Tumble got its name. However, I think it's more to do with the coal seam and the Tumble in the coal seam its original names come from or it's a big hill they protested to change the the name of the village many years ago to to no effect now in that village mine um, they would start at 6 6 30 
or was it 6 30 6 45 and then finish at five it was a long day long hard hours um you know heavy labor for kids it was pretty brutal i think um but once they were done there five o'clock by they were out and they were back in there there was a pub there they'd go to the baths at the back apparently get cleaned up then straight into the pub not only that pub there was this pub also well club in the background there so there you have it that's the great mountain workmen's club um, so we'd run into that pub after five o'clock you can just imagine the rush everybody be finishing their their, their hard day's work they deserved a pint and not only that they deserved a good old ID and all because apparently they used to go in there with a pint you can imagine like hundreds of these guys coming from that mine into the pub grab their pint glass and they would scoop a pint of lager out of a bath out of a bath a shared bath everybody would, would take their lager or their beer or ale or whatever they were drinking scoop it out of a bath there, there was too many people to serve that was the easiest and best way to sort of serve them back then so can you imagine going into a pub taking your pint glass put it in the bath and have your your ale go and sit down have a sing song get drunk with your friends because you knew there was a hard day's shift ahead of you again you wanted to wind down you needed to get rid of this sort of energy that you've built up and then it was nothing better than a good old scrap after that so i'm told they would then sort of have a little too many to drink and then they'd be out clacho as we call it clacho outside the pub nothing like it um good evening helen Stuart, thanks for joining me phil so um now there's a there's a good song or a, a rhyme i learned and it's written in my some of my project stuff over the years which i haven't released yet but there's a there's a well-known mining um uh mining po not poem like a song or a rhyme or whatever anyway it goes something like this um correct me if i'm wrong it's probably going to go wrong now that i'm trying to say it on you um in collier's bach or tumble and guitha underground and i can't remember the rest how's that now then it's just gone from my mind um collier's bach or tumble and guitha underground bara when you're hungry cool oh, i've got it wrong um that's my memory for you uh it'll come back to me in a moment hopefully Let's get this going, shall I? I'm going to show you this here. This is the memorial. You know, a lot of kids are standing out there when they were kids. Um, what's, what's bugging me now is that I cannot remember this rhyme and it's been embedded in my head. Anybody want to anybody wanna remind me? Sunday evenings won't be the same without you, mate. Uh, I've gone back to an old message there. Let's have a look. Mark Thomas Hardcore. What is that? What is that rhyme? Um, Collier's back with tumble and we thought underground. Pamaraf and Tori, we go, we no go up and down. Bara when you're hungry, Kuru when you're dry, Gwili when you're tired, and Nevoid when you die. That's it. That is it. Right. Go and work that out. Maybe you can replay this afterwards. Um, I don't recommend it. You've got a lot of translating to do. So, let's have a look then, shall we? Um, Tumble Hotel. Let's have a look. Where we go next? Let's go and have a look at the Working Men's Club, shall we? Now, let's turn this back. The Working Men's Club, built in 1988. Not long after the Tumble Hotel. Um, or the Tumble Inn as they called it but right opposite that apparently that was meant to be a hotel I've said this before much protest in the village didn't want it not sure exactly why but they didn't want a hotel so it became the Great Mountain Workingmen's Club and right here apparently if I cross the road and go over here apparently I look at this building 
it is said that that might be the first police station. If not, it's that. But I don't think so. This became a store not long after. But it was the first police station. Now, it wasn't there very long. It was gone by 1909 and moved to the top. And I'm chuffed to say that today I'm going to take you to that that police station and we're going to have a look inside. How many of you can say that you've done that? Maybe many of you, but I doubt many of my generation can say that. Um, good evening, Reese Hughes. The ropes would go fast as Ord go up and down. Bars when you're hungry, Kuro when I'm dry. Um, sorry, it's breaking up there. Um, when I'm tired and nevoid when I die. Is it you did? I did say nevoid, did I? Um, Bara when I'm hungry, Kuro when I'm dry. Gwili when I'm tired, that means bed when I'm tired. And nevoid when I die. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, should my Andrew, Michael, it's good to see you all. Now, just to give you a picture, that's the Skidia Combe where we visited last time. Now where we're going now is up High Street. And one of the first main buildings, if I can get my breath back, <laughs> uh, again, I'm getting old, John. I don't think I am, but um, who knows? Maybe I am. Now, let's turn our camera back on this. So you have Eglus de, de Wissant. Now, Eglus de Wissant was built the very same year as the Great Mountain Workingmen's Club. Now, what I want you to see here is not just how wonderful this place has stood to the test of time and has had good upkeep. I want you to see the view that we get from this spot. Now there's no better place to put a church than the highest point closer to God. And down it watches on the naughtiness that goes on in that house over there. Built in the same year. I'm sure this place was built to keep an eye on that place. Who knows? But that's an interesting fact for you. Michael, yes. <laughs> Michael says uh, that's a hell of a hill. He's a postman around here, aren't you, Michael? Um, so it's a hell of a hill to walk up. So you agree with me. I'm feeling it today, Michael, I can tell you. No. Um, if I'm not missing anything, um, I'd like to take you up Tumble Row. And this was called Tumble Row. Built in the late 1800s. This was built for the miners. I think it was at the end, um, just after, just after the egg Lewis was built. So this is Tumble Row, now called uh, High Street. Now behind you, if I cross the road on a way up, doesn't look like much. I was reading um, a book this week about the history of Tumble Row. And a guy was saying, if you saw this place in the 1800s, it was an ugly, ugly place to look at. Clad stone, well not clad stone, actual stone, all very gray. Um, the roads were, were rough. None of it was done up by that point. But it's a very wide road through here. You can't imagine them needing it back then, to be honest. They must have seen into the future, possibly. Um, they knew all us injured human beings would be driving millions of cars and parking pretty much in our front doors these days. I'm sorry, I'm calling people idiots. I'm including myself in that. Humans are a a peculiar, a, a peculiar specimen. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe you wouldn't. Who knows? Mohammed Hassan, should my my friend 
Lisa Lewis, Colin Jones, thanks for joining me. Um, so, hit the share button. Have you done that yet? <laughs> so we've looked at some of the early beginnings of the village in terms of the mining industry, but so much has gone on you, and do you know when you read about it, especially um, one of the books I'm reading right now, by, uh, I think it's W. E. Timbro, and he's talking, well, reminiscing on Tumbo back in the 1800s when he first moved here from Armanford. Now this place still has um, a particular look to it. And that's never gone, but I imagine, look at that. You can just see High Street there, sort of post-war, and not just because of the rubble, I'm talking about its its um, its architecture. And things have changed a little, you know, people have their garages and their, their wood doors and but this this is it hasn't changed anything since I was a kid. It's it looks the same. Um, I am told there were rugby fields up here somewhere. I don't know where. Um, I'm sure somebody out there can sort of clarify where that'd be interesting. And it's on Tobacco, I believe. Um, were there not baths here as well? I can't remember. But what I have read is if I turn this around, just to give you a bit of a idea. Now this green here, behind these houses, they had what they call reading rooms. Imagine that. They used to read. Where were their iPads? Where were their iPhones, smartphones, TVs? Well, guess what? They didn't have stuff like that. And do you know what? They were probably brainier for it. Um, kids read. Kids read. Can you imagine that? I would have read, even being dyslexic. I would probably be reading or trying very hard to read and giving up. But they didn't have much to do then. Not only that, they had these massive sort of sheds here. Um, I'm mumbling on, I'm not sure why. Um, but you can imagine these huge zinc sheds or like uh, buildings where everybody would go to do this. In the day, the men and the boys would go there to read while the women were caring for the house on their days off, obviously, because most of them were in the mine. And to unwind, they would have dances, barn dances there. Um, down shore, bath. What, what's the dance called in uh, in Welsh? Does anybody know? It's a folk dance, a Welsh dance. Anybody know? Aladris, Claire Taylor, Dean Beamis, Sean, Lisa. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hit the share button. The reason I say that, I'd like people to get involved with this, so that we we get more of an idea of. Tumble, past, present, and something for the future. Now then, let's have a look here. At the top here, apparently, and it could very well be this house here. I'm not sure, not 100%. I do know that in one of these houses, the Church of Ebenezer started in a little house in the top of High Street, which was then moved to a zinc shed at the back where they started their, their practice there. And then Ebenezer was built on the bottom at the end of the that century. So 18 something or other, was it 86? I can't remember exactly, or 96. So this would have been the house which was the first Ebenezer, I believe it was definitely on this side, I read. So it could have been that house, who knows. Uh, if anybody does know, that'd be great. So they would practice in the living room there, and they would pray and preach, and then that later went um, lower high street in this very first capel or chapel. Well done, Claire, Tumpath Downs. Um, yes, Tumpath Downs will be held in the in that that zinc reading room. It was taken down just after 
after World War One. I think it was 1926, if I remember correctly. <laughs> 1926, I, by then it was dilapidated, but you can just imagine the community having these rooms, which would have been fantastic, where people could congregate, and it didn't have to be a night out, it didn't have to be in a pub or a club. It's just somewhere that people could go to converse, to read, to chill out, and do stuff together without the influence of alcohol, possibly. Hello. <laughs> you just need attention, that's all. Like me, that's why I'm on you. Yeah, so, um, Claire Taylor, the Tumpath dance, the Welsh folk dance. Never, I was never good at that. I was pretty good at Michael Jackson's dancing though. Check me out. Um, and I might talk a little more of that, but um, about those days on Exhibit X over on Instagram this week. So please join me over there. Do, 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 that's all I can say. My breath will be back in a moment. Now then, now that we're talking about the miners, I mentioned on a recent stream on Carnival Day about one of the riots. It was so, it was probably one of the biggest riots that they'd seen down these ways, apart from the, apart from the um, Rebecca riot. And holy hell broke loose here. But in another case, during the mining times, or while the mines are open here in Tumble, and anthracite has been pulled out of there, or black diamonds, as I mentioned, there was another, um, story that I'd like to probably share before we get get you. No, like I mentioned, I'm going now to the um, to the old Tumble police station. Now I can't can't be sure when the police station closed at this stage. Maybe Malcolm can help us. Who's gonna be showing us around just for a quick five and see what it was like inside. Because apparently and I say apparently I've seen it myself the cell is still there. Um, I went into it, I had the opportunity last year to go into it. Now, this is a funny story. I went to film something else and saw the light beaming on the, um, on the police station. I'd never seen it like that. I'd really wanted me to see the police, the police station. It's the first and last time I've ever seen light like that hit this building. It was glowing like a lantern or a beacon. And when I got there, I thought, oh, I'll get the camera out. I started photographing this building. And then appeared Malcolm. Now, Malcolm informed me, on the very week that I turned 40, that he had lived in that house for 40 years. The very year I was born, he moved into that house. And the very year that I turned 40, he decides to come and greet me in the light and show me around. I thought this was um, one of those serendipitous moments where, you know, things almost happen for a reason. And that's why we're going back here tonight. Um, I thought it'd be a great way to sort of finish and give you an idea of some of the, the, the things that have made this, this village. Now, each village has a foundation and the foundation, this village, it's made us who we are. Even the children of today, as a knock-on effect, the mining village has made us who we are. It has affected us throughout. It might not still be here. It might not have run for, for almost, I don't even know when it closed, but I do know that it's still part of this community. And it's a part of who we are and our history. So, if I show you now, just for an idea, what this place might have been like back then. Swildon! Um, let's get this over here. Right. If I try and cross the road here without now imagine that glowing like a beacon on a hill, which 
It does, when the right light hits it, you get a real impression of that place. Now imagine, at the end of the 1800s, or beginning of the 1900s I believe, um, it was exactly 1906. How's that for accuracy? Now in 1906, I believe it was John Thomas from Green Hill, or one of the sons from Green Hill, was moving away. He was off to live with his fiancée in Australia, who was born there. Um, should my steward was the prince spent a lot of time in there, Joe. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Not not this um, not this jail. It was closed long before then. Let me turn this around. <laughs> so you can still see it there. Right, in 1906, in the Tumble Hotel, um, John Thomas was having a party, a going away party. Him and his friends decided, ah, oh, let's go there, and th they threw him a big bash, and everything was going good. Things were loud, things were, everybody was having fun. And then, um, quite a normal occurrence, apparently, the sergeant of the police station decides to go into the Tumble Hotel, abruptly goes in there and tells everybody they're making too much noise and that everybody's going to be under arrest. And it was uproar. And then he, he grabbed the wrong person, I think, took him outside, um, the quietest, I think he thought. Um, and put him under arrest. Well, little did he know that he had a twin brother sitting in the Tumble Hotel who was about to kick off and he left the the Tumble Hotel marching. He ran out, grabbed the copper, no sergeant, say copper. He grabbed the sergeant and, well, you can imagine, things got heated. Uh, another police officer, police, get it right now, police officer arrived and arrested them both and then took them to here. So, the old police station. Now, you can imagine, when somebody's arrested in a party where they're celebrating, during the mines, uh, during the, the mining era, it didn't go down too well. Uh, and you can imagine, everybody gathered on this road that night. Until midnight that night, this road was full, apparently, where they took to attack the police station and if we go up here we can have a better look they attacked the police station demanding that the twins were freed they hadn't done anything they were having a good time celebrating John Thomas's birthday they launched I think let's have a look if we look at this gate here they took the gate off the side here and threw it through a bay window which doesn't seem to exist I don't know whether that was the bay window uh, they smashed all the windows, they rioted all night, well, until midnight. And it is said that the, the sergeant's wife and children were in the house. Well, you can imagine, how scared would they have been? It's kind of um, a scary idea. And here, there were no lights on this road. Apparently, the sergeant brought this on himself. He was, the, the twins were freed from here in the night. Um, otherwise, I don't think the house would have been left. They were freed and later quitted in the in the in the court. I think it was um, challenged about three times in the court, but they were acquitted eventually, seeing that the sergeant had antagonised the boys, and people believed they were innocent. So, yeah, but you can imagine the sort of uproar. Yeah? Can you imagine the street in the dark? No lights. Apparently, the lamps. There was no communication. So when things kicked off, yeah. There was no telling another police station to bring back up, especially that time of night. So it was a different time altogether. Now, I don't know much about that sergeant. It would be interesting to know a bit more if we could find out. But what a building. Let's go and have a knock then, shall we? Let's go and see if Malcolm has two minutes to talk to us, hopefully. Now, whether that's the same door, couldn't tell you. 
So if we have a look here. Good evening Malcolm. Hello there. Nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you too. So you're going to show us a bit about the, the building itself and you have some of the history or you know some of the history of the building itself. Well, uh, the building was uh, completed in 1909. Uh, the gate is still on the front. The gate also has on the front of the building the, uh, the name County Police Station but that's been uh, been masked out as it were, but I've left the date there. The, the reason I masked it out is I was continuously getting uh, people knocking on the door, <laughs> thinking that this was still a police station. And I think it stopped being a police station in uh, 19... mid to late 60s? It was not that long, was it? Yeah, that long oh. ago. Um, I, I, I bought the house in 1977, we moved in here in 1978. Wow, and I was just saying now that you, you moved in here the year I was born and you showed me around last year, showing me the cell. Oh right, you were born in, yeah, same in, the, sa in the same year that you moved in here, so it, it was one of those sort of chance happenings that you were, you were outside there when I was there. So. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. led us to you tonight. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But there's been a few changes being made to the house because when we moved in here, it had been empty for, for quite some time, uh, for quite a few years. And uh, the, um, the tradition here when the police were here is all the locals would come to the back door Strangers came to the front door. <laughs> Locals always came to the back door. Even if they were being carted in. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> then they'd be then they would be uh, then they would be shown into this door here. And this being the old uh, front office of the police station itself. Wow. Would you like to show us? Is there Yeah, you can come through this I mean I've been using it as a storeroom and workshop now for for quite some time. Um, the front office is here. That area was a cell. And as far as I know, there was only ever one um, prisoner, a official prisoner here. Lots of drunks, <laughs> lots of weekend drunks, I'm told. But this area here was a cell with a barred window. I believe that. There's a, there's a tale that Skibor Bach was kept in this building. One of the um, Rebecca Reuters? Possibly. I'm uh, sure. No, I don't think you're going back that far. Rebecca Reuters. Uh, Not quite possibly. Uh, okay. uh, uh, no, you're then. right. No, that would have been eight, early 1800s, wouldn't it? So, no. Yeah. Uh, then it must. Is it Commander? And possibly? the Rebecca Reuters were caught by troops trying to um, cross the Lacha. River Lacha, they were chased down as far as the River Lacha wow. when the troops were brought in yeah. to try to, uh, to to quell the unrest. <laughs> <laughs> but I have read I have read stories about Re Rebecca Riders and uh, I, I read books ab about them and the whole the whole Rebecca Riot thing was was unbelievably interesting. They, they, they were attacking uh, toll gates down in um, uh, Portarid and Kidwele and uh, it started off they were just um, smashing the gates up and according to what I've read it ended up they were uh, making the, uh, the family, usually the local blacksmith making them homeless by burning the, uh, the gatehouses down as well and, uh, and, and it yeah. was as a result of that the whole thing escalated it was a, it was an awful scenario yeah but it, uh, it certainly made a point this is uh, wow. this was the corridor to the, the cells you can is see. that the original stonework as is there well is that there? isn't stonework no, it's it's that's been rendered over and it's pretend stonework no, no, no. as you can see now we t I take no part of the ceiling here. There's there's the the wall construction is is random stones, as as was common in this area at this 
the period that is built. Uh, this is a this is a cell where the door on the door is being removed, but this this is how it was in its day with with a trestle bed at the other end near the window. Wow. So I'm standing in an official police cell in Top Tumble. Built in 1909. <laughs> wow. So is, what's this feature here? There's a this was the way light was provided for the uh, the cell. There, there would be a valve in this a cavity on this side, and uh, there's a sort of a magnifying glass there, uh, so that uh, the, the prisoners didn't have access directly to anything that was electrical. Well, it's absolutely fascinating to stand there. Yeah. I, I feel quite privileged to actually be in here. You, you told me before that um, they were made to line the walls, is that right? Or to paint uh, the walls? Yes, one of the punishments for the, um, anybody who was drunk and disorderly and put in the cell overnight. They, um, I, I, the tale I heard of the grandson of the original sergeant who, who, who ran the police station and they would put the drunks in here overnight and when they sobered up in the morning they'd give them a, a big brush and a bucket of whitewash and they were told to whitewash the walls. <laughs> so maybe it was just arresting them just to get a paint job done. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when I first came here, the thickness of the whitewash on the walls was quite staggering. <laughs> you, you're talking about that much on top of the original bricks which are one of the most attractive bricks I've seen in a long time. <laughs> so that tells you something about the drinking problem in Tumble, yeah. I think. <laughs> wow. Well, Friday and Saturday nights apparently were drinking and fight nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it still is at some point. <laughs> uh, well, when I first moved into Tumble, I was working with uh, somebody who had brought up uh, the other, at the other end of the main road here, uh, just on the edge of Cross Hands, and uh, and he was saying uh, when he was young, and he was born around the same time as me, Tumble was famous for tribal style fighting every weekend, <laughs> and it had a reputation of being a really rough place to live in. I've never experienced any of that whatsoever. <laughs> It's amazing how some of the features are still here. That, uh, that's wonderful. I tell you what, we should, we should have this restored as it was. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure it would be, make a, an amazing sort of thing. You could open this up to the village, make money it, off it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, I, well, at one time I did think of perhaps opening a sort of a corner cafe here. Yeah, well. And, co and calling it the old cop shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been something, yeah. wouldn't it? But uh, no, I had, um, I mean, I was working uh, and, and uh, I couldn't do two jobs. But uh, I'm, I'm no one too old to do anything more to this. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there is, there's a lot of work involved in this kind of... Um yeah, well, I started employing a builder here and uh, things didn't work out right. And, uh, and I'm getting a bit too old and a bit too decrepit for this sort of thing. <laughs> And so I put a I, I put a stop on the whole thing, and I'm quite happy, to, quite happy to leave this now as it is until the next person comes along and has the desire to do something with That's it. That's exactly what you need: desire. Yes. <laughs> Enthusiasm. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's for young, it's, it's for the young. I think. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Well, that's brilliant. These are original quarry tiles on the floor. I don't know where they originated, but the red brick that you saw in the cells, I'm told, were from a brickworks that was in Trimsaran. And they're called Trimsaran Brick. Are they still running, do you know? No, 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 many, many, before I came to this area. Uh, the Somebody brick was saying the that, brick was closed down. Um, Stuart McPherson saying, I was born in 1969 and I remember this jail opening. Oh, the police station opened. Yeah. So in 1969. 69, yeah. Well, I came here in 77 and it had been empty for quite a while. 
Wow. Well, I some think. people say they've been empty for ten years. Some people say they've been empty for five years. I don't know what the veracity of those comments are. Yeah, you know. Was it? Have, uh, have you had any sort of um, sort of stories that you think, wow, I've moved into one of those places that's a legend? <laughs> well, not really. I originally came from a mining village. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is not my birthplace. I originally came from the Ronda Valleys, uh, from a small mining village in the Ronda Valleys. So a lot of this was very familiar to me. But unfortunately, because I was working all day, I didn't get to meet the locals as such until I retired. Wow. Uh, so my wife knew a lot of the locals and uh, socialised with them. And I just used to tag along occasionally without really knowing much about them. Yeah. But since I retired, I, I, you know, I've got to know a few of the neighbours and what have you. I'll tell you what I would be doing if I was in your place. I'd have a sheriff's hat on and I'd be wearing a badge walking around all day. <laughs> I'd be going out to arresting people in the village. <laughs> Standing on the square in a high vis jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for showing us around. I don't, know, I don't know if you want to see the house itself. Yes, yes that would be brilliant. Well, the kitchen is a lot larger than it used to be. The kitchen used to end here. And there used to be a door here, but everything else is much the same. And there is a story I did here after I moved in. There's a, the bathroom here is upstairs uh, on what I would call an extension of the landing. Uh, all the locals understand about landings. And apparently the bath for the sergeant was in this kitchen. What? Wow. <laughs> a, li a lidded bath. It was a full size bath, but it had a big wooden lid on it in this corner of the kitchen here. Where, where the microwave is. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and being uh, a traditional old Welsh village, all the locals, if they wanted anything or they wanted to talk to, talk to the sergeant about something quite serious, they'd come to the back door. And they'd be knocking on the back door while he was having a bath. <laughs> he complained to the council, as a result of which they installed a bathroom upstairs. <laughs> so, so he could keep his dignity. <laughs> <laughs> he was constantly, constantly getting out of the bath, putting the towel around himself and looking at the answer in the back door. <laughs> well, so you were saying there's something at, at the back there as well that used to be part of it, is that right? The, um, the building? Well, part of the building. Uh, it's a bit small courtyard, isn't it? It's a small courtyard with storage uh, rooms, an outside toilet on the end there, which has long become defunct. And this area here, through this doorway, is, um, is the old exercise yard. It was designed as an exercise yard. Right. And the prisoner's toilet here. Uh, so the toilet's still there. Well, <laughs> that's in the toilet, yeah. Uh, well, but I mean, lots of the walls have been knocked down now, so it's, 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 it's. But you can see the bare bones of the place. Yeah. And you can imagine how it was. Garage, possibly the fir one first, the first garage in Tumble. Was it? Yeah. I think the first car that went in there was an Austin 7. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> was that the sergeant's car? That, oh, it wouldn't be the sergeant's <laughs> car. <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> that being the sergeant's car. Well, that's in the days when, I mean, 1909. I mean, who had cars in those days? No, no you were about to have uh, <laughs> big, big bucks. Big bucks, yes. And uh, it's probably a little later on, anyway, before the, the motor car was introduced down these ways. Well, the, the motor car only started it be popularised in the 1930s, I yeah, think, yeah. with the advent of cars like the Austin yeah. 7. Wow, that's amazing. Ah. Well, thank you very much, Rob. Pleasure. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure to see inside, and I think people will be well chuffed to actually have seen the inside of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll see you uh, pretty soon. We're okay. back in about five. I'll give you a shout. Okay. Thanks very much, I'm gonna chat to these guys on here now and then I'll come back and see you. Okay. Thank you, man. So, Cheers, then. See you. Thanks. Cheers.
So, what do you think of that? We've just been in the Temple Police Station. Um, I'm not sure many people have had that opportunity. Let's have a look here. Turn that back. Everybody hear me? All clear? Right. But the issue sometimes is the mic. So, now then. I'm going to say a couple more things. Um, in terms of, let's have a, let's have a look, see what people have written here. Old Tumble Police Station on the Square, Upper Tumble, says Chris Hendry. Spent some time there as a kid. The sergeant was Dan Ubobi. Now then, that would have been good, wouldn't it? That, that's kind of how everybody was addressed in Tumble. Somebody had sort of a, a prefix um, nickname, possibly. Um, Dan Ubobi, so Dan the copper, or the policeman. Now if we have a look here, you can see it from this side, which you don't get to see from the, oh yes you do let's just turn this around so this is what it looked like from the outside and just to put that on record wow and this here um this gas is in tumble let's have a look um uh, right, we've we've pretty much come to the end of uh, a Bronx. Um, thanks for joining me on a Sunday night again. Um, it's always a pleasure, you know. I've always uh, I've always enjoyed nose in, and if I can share that with other people, win win, isn't it? Now, before I go, I think it's important that I say thank you to everybody that's that's come along. And I'm going to wait for this machine to pass. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, sharing, watching, sharing, um, you know, communicating your ideas, your memories, because that's what this is about. And this is important to my document, our document as a village. Hopefully, this is the then for now, for the future, for our kids marking things there'll probably be better technology by then i'm sure um uh guys my bro is buying the house where the chapel used to be that'll be opposite i'm sure um looks like the cells have gone i don't know the cells are still there ish the gate the um, the cell doors aren't there uh they've been donated to kamar then police station so, as I was saying, um, thanks everybody for joining me over the last 16 weeks. Can you believe that? 16 weeks, plus a few off. Um, and also, thank you to those who have made the effort. I can see one from a window right now, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to draw her attention at this this minute because it just looks creepy. But thanks to. <laughs> Hey! Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's how we greet everybody. That was Tina, my cousin. That's how we greet people in Tumble. We're ho hoi, like um, pirates, I think. Anyway, right. Joel Hineris, thank you to Neris Samuel, Mrs. Julie Jones, Mrs. Hughes, uh, thanks to Erica, thank you to Sharon from Henley's, thank you to Mike Williams uh, from the hall. Thank you, Varchnad Vach, for letting me in to film. Thank you, Hugh, to Green, uh, Hugh from Green Hill. Uh, thank you, everyone who was at the prom race and got involved. Thank you to everybody at the carnival that got involved. And thank you, Mr. Malcolm Thomas, for letting us in to look at the, the old police station. Um, don't forget, this isn't the end. I have plenty more projects in the line. Uh, I'll be back live soon with something else. Um, until then, go and check out my latest exhibition at um, the Senneth in Cardiff. And tune in to Exhibit X on Instagram. And if that's not enough, 
there's going to be a new blog on soon as well called uh, Ex Existentialist. Um, I hope to see you there. I hope that we can have a chat again at some point. It's been emotional. It's been awesome. Until next time, over and out, Brussels Sprout.